In today's episode, we're going to be talking about just how game-changing advertising can be, especially in the launch of a product. If you've ever heard of Skoda, the European car manufacturer, a few years back, they faced a massive challenge. See, they were launching the Kamek Compact SUV in an ultra-competitive European car market. And they weren't just introducing the car, they were shifting their target market from their over 50 male audience to younger families. In order to accomplish this task, Skoda leveraged Amazon's ads, tapping into the magic of strategic advertising using a creative placement throughout Amazon's ecosystem. They tailor their message to engage that desired audience. And so the results ended up being incredible. They reached over 2 million potential customers in the UK. Their favorability soared by 18% among the younger audience. And their perception jumped as well from 24% to 24% from the ages 18 to 34. And so most sellers listening to this podcast aren't going to be launching campaigns for $25,000 SUVs. But what's the takeaway? And it's simple. The right advertising strategy isn't just impactful, it can redefine your brand and propel your product to success. And so if you want to dominate in your niche, making advertising a cornerstone of your go-to market and ongoing market strategies is ultra important. And so today we're talking with Priyanka, a seasoned leader with a background in finance and marketing. Priyanka's worked in the top financial roles in the U.S. and Singapore and Dubai and served as CEO of Opal Advertising and Marketing before joining SellerUp. And so for anyone who doesn't know out there, SellerUp is a leading e-commerce platform that helps businesses maximize their potential on Amazon using AI and machine learning technologies. And so with their reach from the U.S. to the Middle East, they reach over 21,000 sellers globally and work with big names like Philips and Samsung. So Priyanka, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Ian. It's a pleasure. Always talking to you. (laughs) Always. Um, So Priyanka, will you give us um, a little bit of a a little bit more about what Seller App does? I'm sure you can do a much better job at it and kind of what what your role is there. Absolutely. So as you rightfully said, Ian, Seller App is a leading data analytics platform that helps sellers on the biggest retail giant, Amazon to help them scale and ace their journey, you know, whether it's brand awareness or scaling or increasing their conversions, that's what we typically do and help sellers really, um, you know, build their business out there. And so was was sellers, you know, working to get their products in the eyes of more people um, especially maybe newer sellers who are just launching products, when is the right time to start, you know, looking at tools like seller app or lo- jumping into the advertising scene in general? I think so. Um, initially when we started off, Ian, you know, we've been like a data life platform that's been our primary bread and butter. We've been doing this for over six years. We cater to the entire spectrum of beginner level, mid market, as well as the large enterprise level, agency level customers. But right now, our target segment has sort of shifted. Uh, we cater more to the mid and the large segment. However, having said that, uh, it's not like the beginner level sellers or the long tail, you know, customer segment cannot reach out to sell rap at any given time. So for a beginner level seller, even if you don't know which category to get start selling on, you'd probably have to get some market intelligence or data points to ascertain what is it that you want to start selling? What would be your sales potential? What would be your price, uh, you know, profit margins? What do you want to really price the product at? And, and you know, data requirement is critical at every stage and phase of your Amazon journey. Now, I just gave an example of a beginner level seller. Now, that data requirement could be very different from mid-market because they might have already created like a brand awareness, but they're not getting sales. They're getting a lot of page views. They're getting a lot of impressions, but conversions aren't happening. Similarly, for a larger brand, you know, you have an established brand, but again, you know, um, their share of voice is being hampered on or, or you know, competitors in that space are taking away, you know, the, the larger chunk of the market. So, As you know, whether whichever um, segment you belong to, you can use SellRap at any given point. You have a self-serve platform. You know, you want to take advantage of our all-in-one dashboard where we have a premium model where you can access all our primary features for free. And then the mid-segment, because it's a SaaS company, a subscription-based model, 
you can, you know, play around with the system, do it yourself with the dashboard, uh, do your keyword research, product tracking, product intelligence, which means that you can compare your products vis-a-vis your competitors, see what keywords are working for you versus, you know, what's, you know, in the competitor listing and, you know, converting for them, but not working for you. So as attending that will help you better your key, you know, your product page and your product detail page and listing optimization. And as far as automation and advertising goes, I think, you know, you want to really use it to the full potential. Now, what that entails is you want to have maybe a budget optimization. You want to have a bid optimization strategy, which goes into the deeper, more complexities of advertising per se. If you want to get more visibility, increase your outreach, of course, get more conversions and sales. That's when you need to utilize automation because that's what... It's going to cut down on some of those repetitive workflows, those mundane tasks, and also reduce the, you know, human error and have more accuracy and efficiency, um, which will also save you a lot of time, which a lot of us don't have the luxury of. Let me tell you that. Most definitely. I think one of the one of the places that I'm really I'm really interested in learning a bit more about is let's say I am launching my my very first product. Um, oftentimes when we're talking about, you know, um, operating in a business, right? We have, we have goals and then we have, you know, the methodology, the way, uh, or obje- goals and objectives. And then we have methodology and the way of reaching those goals and objectives. And so a lot of these things that we're mm-hmm. speaking about, um, about understanding your bid and your target market and all of these things is part of understanding that what methods you're going to use to reach those goals. But in terms of, you know, a, a new brand on Amazon who is, who needs to take that first step into the, the advertising world. Are there, you know, one or two or three goals that I should be kind of focusing on in the beginning that will help me get that launch pad into the different methodologies that I can, I can, I can implement down the line? So I think, you know, I would say there's not one or two, like I said, you know, at every given stage, there would be some or the other requirement, which is going to be absolutely essential. So at a beginner level, like I said, you know, you have to understand what, what is the market demand? Like, what is the competition? Like, which category do you want to get into? Now that's going to be different for a mid market level where you want to start with, let's say, having the right keywords in place. Are you making sure you have a plus content? Uh, you know, on your bullet points, on your titling, you have the right images, you have the right dimensions, which follow the guidelines of Amazon, you know, Seller Central and so on. So those requirements are going to be very different. And you would need to take a more holistic approach, I would say, Ian, it can't be one or the other. You need to start with the most basic, which is getting the right keywords, getting the right images, getting the right videography, having the right content. For, you know, uh, are you able to sort of like when people are searching for, uh, let's say, for example, if people are searching on the search term uh, coffee mug, you want your brand to show up on the top ranks of those Amazon search pages. Now, how do you ensure all of that happens? By exactly doing all of that, I said, and of course, utilizing having the right campaigns for your advertising, having the right strategies in place. Right. And so that that's broken down into like that first part where you're saying about you know, content, SEO, that's more of an organic approach to driving those leads, which hopefully lead to conversions. And then the second part of what you're saying is more of the paid approach of, um, of advertising and, pay, and paying for the paid for advertising, right. Which, which is the, the most, I mean, it's more like a double edged sword. And, you know, it's like, it's, it's the most efficient and complex and cumbersome, but vital and essential at the same time. And, and so as, you know, for brands, you know, what is there like a, like a benchmark or a KPI I should be thinking about when saying how much money should I be putting into, you know, the, the paid versus the organic? Cause you can get support on the organic part as well with like, with people writing content, people tracking, you know, there's SEO companies out there, um, which are search engine optimization companies that will help out with that organic reach. And then the paid. And so when I'm thinking about what is my spend from a marketing standpoint, how do I divide between the organic and the paid? And how do I kind of get to that point of saying, this is how much I'm spending in each one of the two categories? You know, there's no such uh, rule of thumb or a standardization here where it uh, totally depends on the, again, the segmentation of what you, what customer base 
you are in and also what your budget looks like, right? How much you have in your uh, in your pocket. You also want to make sure that you're not burning a hole in your pocket. So you can't be like, oh, you know what I'm spending on advertising without really thinking of what I'm spending on and yet I'm not getting any sales. So there's no such rule that how much, you know, of course there are brands and, you know, when we speak to sellers, a lot of the things that they've done on the front, on the back end, which is correct, which has getting them organic scale, uh, I'm sorry, organic sales. But if they want to scale their brand, they definitely need to enhance their advertising strategies and do more of that. In fact, that was a brand that I was speaking with just last week. And, you know, I see organically they're doing wonderfully well. You know, their A cost was not A cost as advertising cost of sale was not too high. They were doing great in terms of organic, you know, SEO optimization and getting these organic numbers. But when they say they want to reach a bigger, you know, a customer base or have more sales, have more revenue, have more net profit in their pocket. How do you ensure that you do that? Obviously, you need to harp on, you know, more sophisticated ways of advertising, which they were not doing it up until this point. So I don't think, you know, there is a set budget or it all depends on what your pocket allows and how much do you want, uh, you know, to scale? What percentage? Does that make Interesting. sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think I'm curious a little bit more about, you know, this company that was, you know, doing really well in organic that was having trouble with the paid. What were some of the suggestions that were made to them? And were they, was it, were they easy implementations or were they more longer tail projects? So I think because they didn't experiment with advertising a lot. We told them that, yes, you're doing great. We looked at some of their, you know, product detail pages. They were on point. Um, their A plus content was on point. As far as insertion of the right keywords was on point. Also, it was a more niche sort of a category where, you know, there was less of, you know, competition, but demand was still there. They were also exporting a lot of those products to, to the US and, and worldwide, like Canada and stuff like that. So they had a brand established, not just on Indian marketplace, but also the US marketplace, right? So from an organic standpoint, they were doing all the right things. Now the question comes, how do we do more of this? That's coming organically to us. And for that, they were okay to spend the money, but they were just not doing it. They were not doing enough of, uh, you know, advertising. They were doing almost zilch, like, you know, paid marketing. They were only and only inorganic. So you wouldn't know until you actually do and really see the results. Okay, what if I do, um, you know, what if I do like a right keyword targeting, uh, which means that, you know, I think advertisers can sort of select a specific keyword to trigger their ads when customers search for those terms. You know, it's a it's a very common, commonly used approach for like a sponsored product uh, and sponsored brands. What can you do with uh, product targeting? You can really, you know, it allows you to select specific products or categories to target within your ads. It's also a very useful strategy for reaching competitor listings or complementary products, which again was missing in their a uh, whole uh, campaign strategy that they had uh, as far as advertising goes you know there was they, they were not doing any sort of remarketing which means that you know um which involves sort of reengaging the customers and having like repeat uh, uh customers who have previously interacted or visited your page or bought your product and you know use your brand now that could also be a very highly effective uh, you know way for increasing conversions um, they were not doing any demographic targeting, which means, you know, Amazon advertising also offers uh, very geo-specific demographic targeting options, including age, gender, location, to really help you reach specific uh, customer segments. None of this similar to uh, the Skoda different. example from before. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. If they did these things better, I'm sure uh, they're organic as well as the paid one would have also sort of, you know, scaled up. Yeah, I think that <clears throat> one of the things that is really interesting is one of the one of the points you kind of touched on is it almost seems like the most basic form of advertising on Amazon is that if I uh -huh. put in um, iPhone 15 Pro case, there are a thousand options. And so the very first row is my sponsored ads. And it's sponsored. It right. says sponsored next to it. You, you can you can almost barely read that it says sponsored to the to people, especially not in our space. They don't notice it. Mm -hmm. Like my mom doesn't notice it, and she'll go directly yeah. towards the um, towards that the first normal page. Right, right, right. Yeah. 
rather than where me, I'm looking, I'm kind of looking at organic. I'm looking at that organic traffic because you often see that those have like a lot of sales and better reviews and you can get some, um, you can get even a bit of context there. But in terms of getting to that, um, to those sponsored placements in terms of advertising, that seems like kind of step one, right? You're, lo- you're looking Absolutely. at the, I'm looking at iPhone 15, but then I'm at the iPhone 15 pro cases. Those are all keywords and all the different variations of that keyword. Um, and then you're also looking at like, um, the specific brands that you might be competing against, you know, some of the biggest mo- like brands in my head about iPhone cases is like, um, it's like the otter box. And so I might, I might go and target OtterBox as well because my product is similar to that. And so what, and so what I'm, and so am I understanding correctly that what I'm doing is kind of building out like these lists of keywords and saying for each one of these keywords, I'm producing different bids due to what I find the importance is based on on what's not wording. So, right. I mean, you can also mark some of those negative because you don't want to burn a hole in your pocket. And, you know, the ones that are not converting for you, you want to reduce those wasted ad spends because you're still spending money on those keywords, which are not getting you any sales or conversions. So you typically want to, Uh you know, do that to also optimize on the budget. Because like I mentioned earlier, you know, there will be times when you're still experimenting and you're still trying you know, different hidden trial methods and permutations and combinations of advertising. And you wouldn't know what's working. You obviously need to have a more structured approach and a more uh, holistic uh, strategy on where and how you want to place, at what time of the day you want to place your ads, where you want to place the ads, specifically targeting that customer base that's actually visiting your, you know, uh, and, and now we have a feature called day parting, right? Which, which allows you to sort of schedule your ads in a way where, Depending on the time of the day, you can and, and you see more traffic coming in, let's say in morning, but not in the evening, then you want to place your ads at that point. Because what we've also seen in the past with sellers is that, you know, they have a daily budget set up on their you know, on their portal and most of the budget will kind of be depleted by the by, let's say, within two hours or three hours or by afternoon. And they would have nothing to show towards the evening because their daily budget is, is just wiped out. So those are some of the things that you want to plan and, you know, strategize on as well, which will, you know, of course, have more product targeting, more appropriate ones, and also have budget budget optimization with it. And, and then just to add on to that, Ian, right, you know, um, you, know you mentioned uh, sponsored products. I think, you know, they, they are the most, most commonly used sponsored products and both, uh, you know, brands. They're typically, you know, they promote individual product listing so they will appear within the search results and on that product detail pages so sellers will bid on the right keywords relevant to their product so i use the example of coffee mug earlier I'll probably use the same thing if somebody's searching for it you want to bid on that particular keyword coffee mug and you can get into variations you know there's long tail there's short tail you can go white coffee mug or black coffee mug but whatever you know is most relevant to your brand you want to use that as the keyword that you are bidding on. So when we're talking about keywords, though, d- like one of the things, and I seem to remember having a conversation in the past, like spaces, spaces matter because it, because coffee mug with, with a space and coffee mug without a space, is that a same? Are those, is that one keyword or two keywords? It'll be two keywords, coffee mug. So, so that means in terms of my strategy, I need to be looking at one of the things I need to look at is the the all the different ways that people might write coffee mug be searching for my item and in the way that people people think because I might be because there's so many different coffee mugs it could be like your ceramic like best dog right. parent in the world coffee mug but it could also be like your your stainless steel yeti coffee mug and then you can also have like travel mugs with a lid, without a lid, all these different things. And so you have to be really specific um, and p- also probably having a thought process of like the different mistakes that might be coming, like how people might mis- miswrite, mispronounce or mis- or not understand. Uh, is that is that fair to say? Right. And what's also important is, of course, you know, you creating or, or you know, working, using keywords that is most relevant to your product, but also analyzing what your competitor is using. 
because there might be, as I said, there would be keywords that they're using, they're getting more conversions. And, and our tool also gives you that 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 sort of a you know like that category benchmarking sort of a data where you know you can actually see how you're doing what's your share of voice vis-a-vis your competition within that category who's the top competitors you can you know you can analyze all of the listings that they are working on or what keywords insertions they've had and you can actually see you know what is missing in your own listing so you can also do those sort of things, uh, the analysis, uh, and then really tweak and change your listing based on that. That's interesting. And so the keywords um, and the competitors that are also competing on my keywords, I understand that's available on Seller on Seller App, but is that available to anyone using Amazon's DSP or um, their demand side platform? I would so demand side platform is more um it extends your reach beyond uh you know it's it's actually a more advanced advertising option that allows advertised advertisers to programmatically uh buy display and video ads on and mm-hmm. off Amazon. So it really okay. offers advanced targeting options, including audience segmentation and retargeting. So to answer your question, yes. So it is, it's also very expensive. Not everybody can afford it. So <laughs> not everybody sure. chooses this option unless you are making a lot of money and you're selling a lot of products and you have a great revenue, which is probably like in six figures because um, it can be very heavy on your pocket. Yeah. Cause it's just, it's just super interesting. Cause you know, it seems like, and I guess this is how, you know, business goes in general. Oftentimes, it seems like it's a lot of this is pay to play, right? And so mm-hmm. when you are, when you are a new, when you are a new or growing business and you're trying to beat some of your competitors that are, that have been around for, you know, some of these competitors are around for a hundred years, right? And, you know, if you're thinking about, sure, you know, sure. Procter and Gamble sells everything, um, you can find all kinds of Procter and Gamble, um, products on Amazon. And so companies like that are going out and they're buying these ad spaces and me coming in with my niche product that's supposed to be the new, I don't know, like head and shoulders, right? Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be a competitor yeah. for head and shoulders. How do how do I capture that segment when I'm just I'm just you know, this s- tiny speck in in the sea of Amazon? I think um again, uh talking about those targeting options. By doing various sort of targetings on the basis of keywords, product, even interest-based uh, targeting, where you can reach your customers based on their interests and behaviors, which are really derived from their shopping habits and interactions on Amazon. Um, and yeah, I think that's that would be it. You know, primarily that's what I would do. I th- okay. And one of the things that you you caught my attention with earlier in the talk, and this might go along the same thing, is. Um, is retargeting. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about, um, you know, consumers abandoning carts and going to pages, but going away is how did, how does that retargeting work? So I could, cause now that I know that that customer has seen me before, so I don't have to, mm-hmm. I don't have to introduce myself. I have to reintroduce myself. How does that work um, within the Amazon ecosystem? So um, uh, there's an attribution program on Amazon where, you know, of course, you can uh, find out analytics on who's visited your page. Uh, and then most customers these days, and I'm not talking about the beginner level customers here, Ian. So I think most uh, from mid to large segment, they are not just on e-commerce, you know, marketplace. They're probably selling on mm-hmm. Amazon. They're probably selling on Shopify, Walmart, maybe Etsy, and many more, right? And they have their own website. They have their storefront. They're also doing off uh, Amazon, like social media marketing and so on and so forth. So now, you know, what you can typically do to retarget is at multiple touch points, reach out to them and you know, you have the analytics, you have the data for getting which customers, what time of the day they visited your page. They probably clicked on the product, but did not buy it. You can keep showing them their products, you know, through analytics and maybe uh, going after them on social media and like re-promoting uh, using these uh, marketing advertising strategies again, you know, product targeting, you know, that they would be looking if somebody has the right buyer intent and by buyer intent means they have the right intent to buy. They're not just like window shopping here. Right. Uh, and they know they, they are in real need. Like say, for example, uh, what a right buyer intent would be gift for 
uh, I don't know, Valentine's Day. You know you want to buy a gift for your boyfriend or girlfriend, right? You have the right intent to purchase that gift. So you know that, you know, the person is targeting that and definitely, most definitely wants to buy a present. Then you can target those customers at that point if you have a relevant product, of course. I mean, I just gave an example. Yeah. Which is, which brings us, that's, yeah, that's really interesting because that also brings me back to, um, brings us back to like the, the search engine optimization and, you know, potentially sponsored placements on Amazon. I mean, because- there are multiple ways. Ian. You can also, you can also place your ad on competitive listing. Somebody's probably uh, searching for not your brand, but somebody else's brand, but you can, mm-hmm. you know, promote your ad there because when you're visiting, let's say Coke and you see like a Pepsi ad, then you might be like, okay, let me try this out. Or this is a new brand. Or like, as you say, you know, you have a big share of voice. You're competing with the larger brands like Unilever, Procter & Gamble, or whatever it may be. And uh, I want to show my new brand of uh, shampoo with, you know, it's more attractive images. And I'll probably place my advertisement at that point there on their product pages itself, where in a competitor product or a complementary product, you should be able to advertise your own product. Yeah. True, of no, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me cuz but it's it's super interesting that, you know, you know, we've talked about a couple of things today. We've talked about um you know, advertising like for your specific niche, you know, advertising on your competitors, you know, keywords, advertising on um you know, re- doing some retargeting as well. And one of the things that's also super interesting is what you had said about, you know, the Valentine's Day gifts or, you know, Christmas presents, because Christmas presents can literally, literally be anything at this point. Right. And Absolutely. so, you know, and so it could be, you know, we spoke about coffee mugs. We spoke about Coke and Pepsi. We spoke about um, iPhone cases. And these can all go under the, the umbrella. I spoke about yeah, my, my wife buys me um, head and shoulders for 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 the holidays sometimes. <laughs> That's why and you use for example. Getting like older a- sucks. <laughs> Getting older sucks. It just you know, like and I'm excited about it. I'm like a new pack of socks and some dandruff anti dandruff shampoo. Like that's awesome. Um <laughs> but yeah, it's all um but it's uh, it it's a really interesting way to you know try to wrap your head around um around keywords and targeting the right keywords because it's it's not just what you're selling like you're not just selling your product. You're selling the solution to all these other things. Like what it, what is the problem? The problem is Ian doesn't have a gift for the holidays, right? So what do I do is I'm typing my problem into Amazon search and saying, Amazon, solve this problem for me. What do I buy dad for Val- or for Father's Day? I have no idea, but it could be a wallet, but it could be a weed whacker, you know, my dad George would love a weed whacker and he's not getting one. But that's the point is that is that the keyword from what I'm understanding from you, the keyword optimization is is about solving problems, about helping that customer get to that place faster. Right. Absolutely. And again, Amazon advertising also offers a range of, you know, ad formats, which we just discussed, you know, including, of course, sponsored brands, sponsored products, sponsored display and many more which really allows advertisers to, you know, engage with customers at various stages of their buying journey. And so, you know, they can, these ads will appear either on the, you know, the search results or product pages, even third party websites. So that's how when you talked about remarketing, you know, it really extends the reach of your product and it is way beyond Amazon as well. Amazing. So Priyanka, as we kind of get to the, to the end of this episode, um, I wanted to provide, you know, um, a little bit of time. If there's anything you'd like to add, any conclusions you'd like to make, any trends that we should be looking out for um, in the near future, um, the, the floor is yours. Sure. I think there are one in many. I mean, there's so many, I would say, and I just want to list down a few of them. So I think as, as machine learning technology becomes more sophisticated, you know, brands will begin to leverage AI and automation to enhance their customer experience. We'll see businesses continue to um, sort of incorporate voice shopping to make it even simpler for customers to buy products. And, you know, conversational shopping can really help you interact with your customers in real time. Um, I think customers would also want a more preferred uh, payment option 
uh, or a method during the checkout process. And I think we see a lot of more cashless and touchless stores coming out with Amazon. So I think there are more things to look out for there. Um, I think videos are an effective vehicle for marketing your products. And I, I have felt personally that watching a video versus an image or a photo works better. And for and, and according to survey and statistics, I think a lot of people also prefer video ads versus just like a static image. Um, I mean, I think the advent of uh, Amazon's sponsored brand video has also been like a game changer. I mean, this format really allows sellers and brands to feature a product with an auto-playing, you know, video option. Um, and then I think we're already coming up with some of these, you know, some some portals are already using or some marketplaces are already utilizing, you know, like product visualizers or product builders, 3D mapping and augmented reality to make it even faster and easier, convenient for customers to visualize and explore, like try out your products online. I don't know if you've noticed there's some sunglass brand when you wear it, you can see, okay, choose this option and how it looks on you or or a particular dress or a shoe, whatever, how it looks on you is like a 3D image of that. And that makes your decision making much, you know, easier and faster because you obviously can't touch and feel the product. You, you know, it's very intangible you unless you go to a store and buy. But if you're buying it online, then you want to make sure it looks, you know, good on you. So I think that would be it. And then I think one important I think Omni Channel would continue to expand. I mean it's going strong this year. I'm sure it will continue for next year as well. I mean you know, today shoppers value convenience over anything else. So it's not just when you're, you know, you, you can just on the go, you can, you know, purchase and, you know, buy, sell products, whatever it makes it very, very easy and just enhances the whole customer experience per se. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of really exciting things to come. Um, I'm actually really excited about voice shopping. Um, yeah. And Have you tried it before? I think it, I, I haven't tried it before. Um, but I think it is, I think it's something that's, that's really cool. I also love that, um, every so often you read an article about, you know, um, like some kid ordering something on Alexa, but yeah, I think that the technology that's coming out and the way that brands are going to be able to reach us, um, and really give us what we want when we want it is, is super, super interesting and not just trying to sell, um, sell a product or sell a solution is like really, uh, what you see these brands, uh, do more consistently and just better. Um, and so Priyanka, thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing your expertise, everything from um, advertise, everything advertising, both from the organic side and the paid side. I think that there's um, a bunch of nuggets of gold in there that sellers can use to implement on their, on their Amazon accounts. And many more coming. So every year, there's like a every couple of months, there's like a new update coming on Amazon as well. So I think they're becoming more and more customer centric. I'm sorry, seller centric also. And, you know, thinking out and like creating tools that will aid and help them to really ace their journey on the biggest marketplace that we have here. And it's not, I yeah. mean, it's not dying anytime soon. It's just growing by leaps and bounds. So, yeah. Most definitely not going anywhere. So, uh, Priyanka, thanks again so much. Thank you for having me.